this is the budget session one of the finance committee of the 2018 uh, budget. First up is the sheriff. Welcome, sheriff. Good evening. Before. Do you, uh, would you like me to give you a breakdown of where we're at, or do you want to fire off questions, or I know it's just... For you. Okay, well, I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, basically, in comparing our 2017 adopted budget with our 18 proposed, you'll see an overall increase of 2.1%, uh, which basically amounts to roughly $1.6 million for all of our divisions. Those are primarily um, only due to the increases in our point ones, which are our personnel lines, which are basically the raises. There's no other increases for, uh, for anything else. Uh, our Stop DWI program, which you are pretty familiar with, local programs and agencies uh, engaged in activities which support our mission to reduce alcohol-related crashes. This is self-funded by DWI fines. Out of our Stop DWI program, we pay for an assistant district attorney's office at 72,000, an Albany County probationer, probation officer at 65,000. We also have Bill Van Alstein, the traffic safety educator, uh, his salary at 81000 And uh, we did switch things up this year and created a uh, revenue line for our Live at 25 classes, which are Albany County unique. And we're trying to get other counties to adopt the program very similar to this, uh, which brought in revenue of 20000 Basically, if you get a moving violation under the age of 25, you're mandated to take this course. And in doing so, you may get a point reduction and a relatively clean slate on your license. Um, again, Stop DWI is all self-funded through DWI fines and Governor's Traffic Safety Grants. And our 3020, our 911 system, uh, we are nearing the end of a monster program with our 800 megahertz radio system collaborating with the City of Albany, Town of Colony. The system is fully operational for police, fire, and EMS. Town of Colony, City of Albany, City of Cohoes, Waterbury, Green Island, and the Sheriff's Office right now are utilizing it. Radios are being installed and all the other public safety uh, vehicles literally right now. Um, the Communications Center deployed a next-gen 911 capable telephone switch to County of Saratoga, County of Rensselaer, um, it was a co uh, collaborative effort with all three counties. The next-gen switch will retain the current enhanced 911 functionality to give residents of the county the ability to text 911, which will be the first of its kind. The 911 switch will make it possible to integrate the phone system, computer-aided dispatch, and the mobile car systems all together. So basically, we're streamlining and making things more efficient. In doing so, Albany County saved roughly $1 million by collaborating. And our law enforcement department, 3110, we're currently managing 22 grants at 2.7 million. We've closed seven and opened two, uh, 10 new ones. This year, we've taken over primary EMS for the town of Rensselville and the village of Boresville, as well as responding to more falls in the hill towns to assist the volunteer agencies where volunteerism is slowly declining. We've answered 600 ambulance calls to date. And of course, we're billing back as a result of that. The revenue for the ambulance, ambulance transports has helped us purchase $200,000 in AEGs and EKGs for all of the volunteer ambulance squads and the sheriff's office and other agencies within the county. We have paramedics paired with EMTs now assigned to the ambulances during the day, permitting response to incidents by two members rather than three, so trying to streamline and make things more efficiently there as well. Our Project Lifesaver, which is funded through asset forfeiture, we have 85 participants now in the program serving the el elderly and children and anyone else with special needs. They range from 3 to 97 years old. Um, just last weekend, we saved an el elderly gentleman down on North Pearl Street, so they're responding all over the county. Our HAZMAT, with the help of a $65,000 grant, we have a new infrared mass spectrometer for our forensic HAZMAT team. Our fire coordinators are doing I could keep you here all night and talk about them. We've got more training going on, prop trailers, you name it. Um, we've just had the largest recruitment effort and the largest class for new firefighters in several years, hopefully bringing that up. We're also using asset forfeiture money to sponsor numerous underprivileged children in local AAU programs consisting of basketball, lacrosse, karate, and flag football. Airport Station helps provide security in and around the Albany International Airport and is fully re reimbursed by the Airport Authority at 2.7 in 2016, despite having the least amount of staffing of any Cat 1 airport in the country, with 1.5 million travelers annually. In 2017, we've continued upgrading our fleet, provided several vehicles to other county departments, such as Albany County DPW. We anticipate auctioning off several vehicles in 18, with proceeds of the auction being helped to offset purchase of new vehicles. We've upgraded our fleet with several vehicles at no cost to the county by using seizure funds. Civil Enforcement Unit continues to provide Albany County with revenue through collection of garnishments and fees for services. 
So far to date, we're roughly 478,000 in revenue has been forwarded over. Uh, we're continuing to do the self-defense classes for women, RAD classes. We're doing active shooter for roughly 10,000 people so far, with another 500 projected by the end of 17. Our community relations units continuing to build strong relations throughout the community. Uh, we attend monthly village town meetings all over the county. We schedule a variety of events. Uh, we now have a very small substation in Rensselaerville. In our correction division, our facility will operate in 2018 with roughly 40 vacancies leaving 258 working correction officers. We've got a number of programs up there which benefit county agencies and outside community as well. Some of those are the work crew. To date, we've, um, we have put out roughly 10,000 inmate work hours, saving thousands of dollars. The Sheriff's Office and Catholic Charities, we've trained 352 inmates with Narcan and released them from the facility. Our SHARP program is second to none in the country. We've re, uh, had roughly 190 to 200 go through with a recidivism rate of 15%. Two weeks ago, we kicked off a full-time women's sharp wing, um, which we anticipate having the same results. Our soldier on is second to none, but we have approximately a 5% recidivism rate. And what I mean by those recidivism rates, folks, is they're not coming back to jail. We still run our steps to adoption readiness. We've done roughly 103 dogs and 30 cats through the facility. We've got gardens. We have a brand new program that um, we're about to launch off, which is Reading for a Change, which will have parents inside the jail being recorded, reading children's books, and sending the books and the, and the recording home to the child so the child can read, read along. The whole thing is to try to continue to build steady family relationships, even though one, either a mom or a dad, may be in jail. Um, we have capital projects. The roof project's been completed in August. Our nice NYSERDA will be completed by the end of 17, which should hopefully save us thousands of dollars with LED lighting. I would also like to mention that roughly we've shaved off roughly $3.1 million from our 2018 projected budget uh, for the county to help them achieve a minimal tax increase and still be able to provide a highly a high proficient and efficient public service agency. Um, with all of that said, sir, there's a couple things that I would like to mention tonight. One, um, we failed to um, submit two deputy sheriff's positions. They were omitted from print from the airport. Um, we'd like to have them added to the airport um, that is fully reimbursed positions. The only time we've ever added staff up there was just after 9-11. We added 10 positions under John Egan and about three years later three of those positions were cut. Um, again, we are the most understaffed airport as a Cat 1 in the country. So we would like to do that. Uh, we also have a, um, we received a grant for $25,000 from Senator Amador to help with a KSAC in the jail. I've got inmates looking for more counseling. I think we should try to provide as much as we can. And we'd like to put $20,000 of that towards a part-time KSAC. Um, 25,000 grant is already... I actually went to the legislature last night, sir, to receive that 25,000. Um, it's all ready to come, but it's not in the, in the 18 budget. Okay, so we have to add 25,000. Correct. So to date, our uh, requested of all of our units is $76,618,581. Thank you, Sheriff. Are there any questions? Mr. Krause. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sheriff, great job on this budget. It's tight. I don't know where we could uh, find much to, to reduce here. Two quick questions, though, <clears throat> to refresh my memory. On the seizure funds, you're limited as to what you can use those for, correct? You cannot correct. use those for personnel at all? No. It basically, I can't supplant budgetary funds. Um, and then, of course, I can only use 20% of those funds each year for, like, community projects. That's how we help out with, like, um, Mississippi Day, um, mm -hmm. uh, the Carnival on the Hill, things like that. Um, sometimes fireworks for a town, whatever the case may be. And uh, lastly, because I know there are others with questions, the SHARP program. Yes. Um, it seems to be very successful. Extremely. The recidivism rate is? 15% on the SHARP program, where the rest of the jail is 42 to 45. Excellent. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sidorachi. Uh, two quick questions for you, Sheriff. First, um, the Security Service uh, Unified Court Line, which is A3110, uh, 03331 on page 236 has been decreased. What's the explanation for the decrease? Is this the unified courts? Unified courts, where are you? Which uh, 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 line A, page 236, <coughs> line A, 3110, 
03331. Yes, that's our, our contract with the Unified Court System. Um, quite honestly, sir, over the last couple of years, we've been nickel and dime to death. Um, we've had to eliminate the, uh, we've had some older fellas, retired, um, that would come down and work in the courtrooms. They've eliminated that line. I was able to absorb that through other funds in my budget to keep the fellas working. Um, they've also projected that when a Supreme Court judge or a county court judge um, decides to take half a day off, they don't want to pay us to have the deputy there for that half a day. So they've been cutting back. Um, it's become very problematic in areas, but uh, Judge Breslin has been great to work with to try to help restore some of those funds. Okay. And then the last question I have is uh, recently the legislature passed local law fee, which is uh, pay equity in your department. Are all your employees, uh, men and women, are they at a fair uh, pay equity scale? Absolutely, most of our wages are negotiated through, um, through bargaining units. Um, the uh, the uh, contracts dic dictate, you know, the salaries. Um, I can't think of any cases where somebody would be making less because of gender. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Uh, two questions, Chair. Uh, first one has to do with EMS the reimbursement from the towns. Are we okay with that? I understood there was an issue with that. Um, recent past. I think we're okay with it, but the town of Bethlehem does have some issues with uh, the percentage increase that we forwarded to them. What it's important for everybody to realize, especially the town supervisors, and many of them do, um, we don't make money off of that. It's completely budget neutral. If there's a 1.2% personnel increase, well, that's what we're paying, that's what we expect back. Um, many times to help some of the towns, I've used some of our funds to purchase an ambulance or an AED. We just did $200,000 in AEDs and EKGs for all the towns. Um, but the costs are the costs, and certain towns wanted to try to kick the can a little bit, which is good, but sooner or later you can't kick the can any farther. So some of the towns experienced a 5% increase in EMS costs. <coughs> So it's been resolved, though? Um, not completely. Okay. Um, but again, our costs are our costs. There's a meeting coming up. Um, if they don't want to pay that, then they're going to have to show us where they want to cut back on the ambulances and the EMTs and the paramedics that provide the safety, health, and welfare for the residents. Okay, good. Uh, one other question I don't know, should probably hopefully it's an easy answer. You've got something in here that says half taxi on one of your patrol cars? Yes. Yeah. No, it's... Um, it's more of a prop for uh, stop DWI. If you see it, it's half police car and half a taxi. Oh, okay. um, so you can pick your ride. You can either choose to drink and drive and ride in the front, um, or okay. take the taxi and ride in the back. Okay, thank you. That's it. Are there any other questions, Mr. Davis? The, the the overtime, Sheriff. Please. Why is it going up so significantly year over year? Um, mainly, we are short and we're being required to do a variety of different duties. We are now taxed, and that's why, if you see, sir, you, we put in for five new deputy sheriffs this year. We are now doing, for, let me back up, for many years, um, when things were going good, a lot of the local agencies provided their own prison transports. Technically, by law, it's the sheriff's responsibility. So, as things have gotten tighter, budgets have gotten a little restrained, <laughs> We have had to supply all of the transports. Now we do everybody in the county. We transport from early in the morning to late at night. And most of those late at night is overtime. I'm um, looking for the bodies to get an afternoon shift so we can kill off some of that overtime. We'll have more people <coughs> available to do a lot of these transports. And that doesn't even factor in downstate runs or out of county trips to, like Rensselaer County may want one of our prisoners, we've got to provide it or we have to go to another county to pick somebody up for one of our court appearances. <coughs> oh, sure. And just to um, follow up on the jail, uh, what, how many people are we currently housing there from out of county? Does that continue to go down? No, uh, it went down. We had a, um, we had a little bit, it's ebbs and flows. Um, we were down a little bit last year. Um, this year we've picked it up a little bit. Um, I think like today I'd be around the 110 mark with about 30 of them on any given day coming from Scary County, which I should be able to maintain that for about another two years until their jail is built. Um, our federal borders 
That's where the money is at 119 a day. Um, that has been slowly increasing. Um, and of course, we do some immigration holding. Uh, we're one of, the, one of the few county jails, us and I believe Washington County, that are um, authorized to hold uh, immigration. Um, they pay a little bit less, but it's still in the hundreds. So, uh, you know, we're projected at the end of this year to be about a million and a half over what we thought we would be at. So we expect to be about 3.5. Thanks. And we, do, we use that to offset the fine. Um, Chair, if I have a question, I noticed the um, youth diversion activities. It's uh, on page 235, yes. A31104467. In um, 2017, there was $301,093 spent, and now it's at $0. Correct. So can you explain yes. uh, what, what that is um, and why that's the case? Long story short, the FCC was looking at changing the rates for inmate surcharge telephones. So basically, we get a commission off of every phone call that's made up there. Um, it's a lot of money. And the FCC was looking at changing the regulations. When they did that, I contacted the vendor and said, listen, if this goes through, we're going to have a serious problem. Not only are we going to lose that money, but I don't want your phones anymore. So uh, we were able to work out an arrangement, and they gave a cash infusion to the county in anticipation of that would be basically what we made off of the phones for three to four years. Um, it was challenged. The FCC somewhat rescinded that order. That money was, some was split into the general fund, some was put into that diversion line. So basically, to answer your question, it was a one-time cash infusion. We've only used probably thirty to 40000 of that money today, John. About $40,000 of that money. So there's roughly $260,000 that we're going to ask <coughs> that um, would be held over for next year. <coughs> Encumbered. Okay. So it's there, uh, 260000 of it's roughly there, Still. but I can't put it in the budget. I, I just see. have to encumber it. Okay, could, could you explain um, a little more detail what, what um, is done for the youth diversion activities? Uh, yeah, what we do with it, we do a lot of the AAU games, a lot of the okay. equipment with AAU, things like that. <laughs> um, anything that we can do to keep kids off streets and keep them busy. So Sometimes it could be boys and girls uh, club trips, things like that. Is, so is the county's AAU program, is that all under this line? No, sir. Or is that uh, also in the recreation department? That's in the recreation department. Okay. I don't have uh, anything. I fund a lot of it, a lot of the programs directly, and I believe one salary for it. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Higgins. Um, I was recently at a meeting with the city delegation and the mayor of Albany, and she was really pushing the takeover of the city 911 operations. And I was wondering... And I know that was mentioned in the consolidation report that was issued with the yes. Rockefeller Institute and was dropped out of the ultimate, the, the enacted one. It was in August, it was out in September. And I'm wondering if you can give us an update on what's going on with that proposal, because I <coughs> noticed it's not in the executive's budget. Um, the city, obviously, I'm very yeah. interested in it because of the savings it would provide mm -hmm. to the city. Well, here's the situation. Right now, we're count our, our communication center is at 449 New Salem Road. It's a building that is roughly 3,500 square feet or so. Um, I have an army of dispatchers packed in there. We've consolidated Coho's Water Week, Green Island, and Queemans. Yeah. So um, I don't, I can't put anybody else in there and still provide a safe atmosphere for 911 calls. So we're looking at a different spot. <coughs> no secret, we're looking at going in the fifth floor of the nursing home. Mm -hmm. But we're kind of held a little bit at bay until they can start, they have to renovate pods I think B, C, and D or something to that effect. And when those pods are renovated, fifth floor goes down, I can get in and, and renovate the fifth <coughs> floor. Um, so unfortunately, I'm, I'm kind of in the hurry up and wait mode. I'm eager to do it. I have some funds available to do it. Um, I've had an engineer go in there and give us a, a, some, some blueprints. But I did speak with Larry Slackey uh, this morning. And... Um, it really doesn't look like I'll be able to, and, and George Pikeman, if you can, I think like the first quarter of 19, I may be able to start to renovate. Is that about right? That's about That's right. I don't where, want to give any Yeah, it's dates. really in flux. <laughs> it's, um, I don't have any you know, for, uh, really fixed dates to do this. I'm eager to do it myself. I know that the mayor had indicated that she would like me to possibly co-locate. Um, that's going to cost the county a lot of money. And... Um, I think when it's done, if they're still interested, I think it would be a grand slam for both municipalities. I think whenever you have just one center, I think that's the way that the whole county should move towards. Um, but 
With that, they have roughly 39 allocated to dispatchers, and I think there's roughly 31 to 34 filled. So that would probably be the number we would need. They're big. I only have 31 right now. Um, but it would save a lot of money in infrastructure, obviously buildings, <coughs> maintenance, things of that nature. So it's Aaron, do you have to get authorization from the health department to go in there? <laughs> you know, I was told that um, the comptroller's office called and told me that after a meeting. I was never, ever made Our aware of that. Or the state comptroller? Our, con our controller called and gave me the heads up on that, that he heard that, and I'm like, I, I have no idea. So I asked um, somebody at the nursing home this morning, and they told me that um, because of what we're doing, we just needed background checks, which obviously I have. Um, and I was told no, but then I was told about an hour and a half later that I probably do. So uh, honestly, at this point, I, I can't answer that. I'll have to do some digging myself and, and find out. Um, I think it's a great project. I think it's a great repurpose of the building. I think it's a huge cost savings. I can get in that nursing home with their approval, obviously, and your approval. I can get in that nursing home, repurpose that building, and outfit it with state-of-the-art next-gen technology for $2.5 million. If I got to go out and build, I'm looking at roughly $20.5 million. Uh, and, and, and with respect to the city 901, uh, that's down the road a ways, but I think we need to really look at a, a whole perspective and a whole spreadsheet on how that affects the Albany County taxpayer yeah. and what kind of effect it's going to have on this. Uh, yeah. It's got to be good for both. It's got to right. be good for them. It's got to be good for us. Yeah. Right. I mean, in, in some of the municipalities, in, in some of them we did five-year deals, some of them we did three years. This may be a ten-year deal. You know, we we're going to have to really break down the numbers and look. It's this is it's a giant and it's a massive consolidation. I think it's it really is still in the best interest of everybody in the county to do it. Um, but again, it's it's big and uh, it could it could be a ten-year. I, I don't know. We got to really crunch the numbers, which we have not even touched. I was going to say that's just one of those things. Uh, once it's negotiated, it does have to come back here for the legislature to want to prove in the same as we did for right. Hose Green Island Water Bleed. And not only does the legislature have to approve it, it's also going to be passed and adopted by the council in the city of Walden as well. Right. Mr. Higgins. Just so, best case scenario, will be like 2020. <laughs> Well, I really want to stay away from that number. That's actually what was said to me, and I'm like, that's not that's not workable because I can't survive in this atmosphere right now. Um, we need to do something. I mean, I have we've just put twenty twenty five million dollars into our nine one one system and radio system and records and CAD and everything else. Um, we're ready to go. So, if it's looking like twenty twenty, honestly, I would rather move on and look at it, uh, another. Try to repurpose Option. another building. Okay, yeah. interesting. Mr. Clay. Sheriff, how does this affect the operation of the nursing homes in terms of uh, it that limits any expansion of the nursing home? Is that about right? No, sir. Uh, we're, we would be repurposing the tower, which I'm told there'll be no um, no folks in the tower anymore. Yeah, it's a mental health unit, right? So I would take over the fifth and half the fourth. And, um, and it would allow for indefinite expansion. I mean, I'd be going from 3,500 square feet to roughly 11,700 on the fifth floor and another close to 6,000 on the, sec on the fourth floor. So I would have indefinite expansion as other towns decide to consolidate if they do. We would also be looking at, at the potential for regional consolidation of, of 911, which would save gazillions of dollars down the road. So we would be very far ahead in Albany <coughs> County to go on that fifth floor. But to be honest with you, 2020 is that's a long ways away. Are there any other questions? This was the fun. Um, Sheriff, you mentioned the uh, revenue we get from the um, telephone calls. I just want to confirm, is that the line on page 230 3020 for about 1.3 million in revenue? Um, I don't believe so. But let me just or if, if not, could you um, <coughs> tell me where, where I can find that revenue line? Which, um, can you give me the line that you thought of emergency? Uh, page 230, close to the bottom, emergency telephone. No, nope, that's all 911. That's okay. That's all 911, so we would be over here. <coughs> sure. Dennis, is there a question? No. Right. Frank? Uh, sure. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, present time, two thousand. 
we have the capability of housing over a thousand inmates out there. In the past several years, there's been a downward trend. It's come up a little this past year. Uh, is there any value to taking a look at decertifying the oldest part of the account? Um, the immediate answer would be no. Uh, mainly because, as I sit here, I'll, I'll, we're still digging. We'll find. I'll get yeah. your answer. Um, <clears throat> the immediate answer would be no. Right now, as we sit here, I've got 21 housing units in the in the Albany County Jail. We can house house 1,040. As of today, I have 18 of them occupied, three of them unoccupied. A hundred a hundred man C building, a 50 man linear tier, which I believe is the second west, and a five person linear tier, which is the fourth west. Of those cells. What this, it gives us the, the availability and the functionality to have swing space if we have to move inmates off, whether it's a flood, a, a water heater blows, a washer a line goes, whatever. Plus, we're also able to go and renovate those cells, paint those cells with the inmates. They can scrub them, they can clean them, we can fix them, we can make sure they're secure, making sure the, that the light covers where inmates are known to hide uh, shanks or pills or whatever behind are secure. And then what we do is we move 50 inmates over to the second west and fill that and we may open up the third west and redo that one. The other point of interest, when you decertify cells, those cells are locked down and we can't go in there. They're done. So God forbid that I have to empty a building, which a building will hold 100. Linear tiers hold 50. The linear tiers, if you envision an overlay of the jail or the old you know, the old Attica-style jails, which we've gotten away from, and we've added buildings, A, B, C. Each building is 100. It's an open space area. There's individual rooms. So if i got to empty a building, i got to move 100 people quickly, and it happens. So that's why I go and I leave our counts down, and to help the county, we run with 40 vacant correction officers, which I think, with salaries and everything else, is over $3 million. I think it's about $3.1 million alone. So, and we can afford to do that. As we put a dollar in the line, which by Commission of Corrections mandate, I have to keep those lines available. So by putting a dollar in it, we can hold the line over for the year and, and roll it to next year. Um, if next year, come budget time in May, June, I'm at you know 800, uh, maybe we only can run with 20 open COs next year. But it saves us a lot of money to just fund it with a dollar and run with 40 open. And it certainly saves us money, believe it or not, to keep those cells open. Plus, there's a chance that the marshals could call me at 10 o'clock tonight and say they just had a huge sweep and they need 30 cells. And that, 30, that would be 30 inmates I could put in one of those tiers and charge them $119 a day. So our agreement with the marshals is if I get somebody, I get them, and we transport, they reimburse us for everything. Plus, we have them for a minimum of, of a week. So that's 7 times 119 times 30. So it adds up quick. So to decertify the cells, I think, would only hurt Albany County. And again, there's no going on those tiers. They basically don't exist. They lock them down, and they tell us if we go on them, we're subject to fine. Anything else, Mark? No, that's it. Anybody, excuse me, are there any other questions? Uh, Sam, that million and a half was the check that we got for the inmate phones. OK. All right, and that check is, carries us to October of 18. So in October of 18, if nothing changes, we'll go back to receiving commissions. Um, if it does change, we'll before it's locked in, we'll look for another <coughs> cash infusion. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bullock. Thank you. Uh, Chair, uh, I know the inmate phones are, are an issue with me and, and what's charged with, with the person on the other end. Uh, but, you know, I, I like the idea of the, uh, the jail in terms of uh, of, of, of ameliorating the problem of that extra expense that has to go to people. Also, you know, I, I don't know if you've got the MSDS for that foam that happened in the airport recently, but I suggest you get it because there's a lot of questions on what was in that foam. And the other thing is, well, I'd like to know what you think about the sale of the hockey arena to the air, from the airport to the airport. Well, unless I can put inmates in it, it really is no business. <laughs> <laughs> what about the 911 people? Oh, really it's a big space. It's wide yeah. open. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, Mr. Grimm, you have a question? Yes, um, uh, thank you. Uh, on the overtime, uh, you talked about prisoner transport. Is that transferring them from the jail to uh, the judicial system? Mostly courts. 
Okay. Um, it's mostly courts, but almost every town court, it, well, every town court is night. Um, colony starts late afternoon, but they go late into the night. Um, city courts, uh, it, we do all of the transportation now. Um, that's why we were able to work out an arrangement with Colony and we basically absorbed their prisoner transport van. Um, it's a very expensive... When I visited the jail, uh, Sheriff, you showed me a video room. Yes. Where, with, yes. with the capability of doing video arraignments. Yeah. And that is a huge potential huge. on the prisoner transport issue. What's getting in the way of that? Just the technology in the local municipalities or they're, uh, they're, uncom they're well, uncomfortable with the new ideas? Yeah. Listen, I've, I've spoken to. Uh, we try and keep it down that road. That's a, yeah. that's a big I, number. That's a big. I've potential. spoken to Frank Camisso about this for a few years because he he know it, there's a huge cost savings. If I listen, every time I put an inmate in a van and put him on a highway, Albany County is exposed. And it's a risk. God forbid there's a it's crash a, or whatever. Yeah, it's a, a risk, huge risk. A risk yes. to our officers too. Um, I am set up to do it. Um, Judge Crummy actually, um, you know, this was a vision that he had a while back. We just could never. We couldn't get anybody to sign on to basically take the bait, but I'm ready to do it. Um, it's just like video visits. I don't want people coming to visit our jail. I want you to stay home, open up your computer, and talk to your significant other via computer. Yeah. Because every time somebody comes in the jail, there's a risk. I had a guy pass heroin in the jail the other night, and we had to bring an inmate back two times. He was dead. We had to bring him back twice and then take him down to St. Peter's. So, listen, the, the, I really think that... Albany County is ready to do it. I just think that the state needs to embrace this program and use the technology that's out there to make everything more efficient and safer. No question. Safety and, and for, uh, for costs and safety, there's no doubt about it. And I think it's incumbent upon all our legislators to, to talk to these people and say, hey, this is the future. Jump on board. Careful. Yes, sir. Just like you clarified, you spoke to Frank Missile, but what was Frank Missile saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> that we just spent millions no. of dollars yeah. on a new courthouse remodeling it and all the technology is in there yes to do it we can do it and you okay. you, you, you no know you reason not to do it. right you know yourself uh, we were i think at the time we were talking about the money of saving on vans prisoner transport vans gasoline maintenance of it's those maintenance. vans it's i need to buy a new bus next year a new uh, prisoner transport i'm trying to work out something with cdta because a new prisoner transport to replace the one i have is about one hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars and it's a very hard expense to swallow but then again, if I look at a bus and try to do a whole load and get them down here into the building and lock them up for the day, now I'm talking about having somebody trained on a, a, to drive the bus because even though I can put more people in the box, it's a bus. So Are there any other questions? Stop. Thank you, Sheriff. Put them in the Iraq. We don't talk about that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Next up is the county clerk, Mr. Higley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's a tough act to follow, my friend. Why don't you just give us an overview of the budget? Very quickly. Uh, very quickly, I have just a couple of items that uh, we've requested some additional funding for. Uh, in the Albany County Clerk A1410.44046, uh, I've requested an additional $4,000 from the 2017 budget, and that is uh, for the new FOIL request system annual maintenance service that we have to have. Uh, I'm sure all of you have experienced our new FOIL system with the county clerk's office. It's dynamic. It's the most modern system that you can use now. Uh, it's quick. Uh, department heads get a request immediately. They get flagged automatically when the five days are up. They have to let me know uh, when the time frame they can answer a request in. So this $4,000 of additional money will help me uh, continue to maintain that FOIL request system. The, uh, the other... Uh, in A1411.44046, uh, you'll see that um, we've added $149,077 uh, to, and that is to uh, put into the budget for the, uh, the grant application we received from the Local Government Records Management Improvement Fund. It's an additional $3,100, uh, which it's 100% state funded. But, uh, you know, we had to put that in so that you could see exactly what was going on with that. Um, we've asked, uh, additionally in uh, 
.22210 and A1411, we've asked for an additional $30,000 for hardware, for digital records. It's going to be a new server. Uh, our IT department, um, Perry Blanchard, has indicated because of all the technology that we've been improving in the county clerk's office and in the hall of records, he doesn't have enough storage anymore for us. So he has requested that I ask the, the legislature for an additional $30,000 for that. Um, and we will also be adding another $10,000 in cloud space to uh, store our records now. Um, we've asked in, in for office equipment in the amount of $15,000 in A1410-22-2001. Uh, if you take a look at my office, these chairs that we have 14 workstations that are utilized by the title searchers and also the chairs that are used by the county clerk's office they're, they, they've been there forever and a day uh, a lot of them now have duct tape on them a lot of them are broken uh, they're not replaceable a lot of them are are just uh, I'm, I'm scared when I go in <laughs> it, it's it's terrible to, to see uh, so I've asked for $15,000 so I can purchase some new chairs and a couple of new printers. The printers that we have in the county clerk's office are, are extremely old and with the new t newer technology that we're getting into uh, with this, the county clerk's office, it's, it's, it's a necessity that we buy a couple of printers to replace the ones that we have to meet the new technology needs. So really, um, other than upgrading our e-filing system and e-recording system in, in Albany County, in 2018, the expansion of the Hall of Records that's currently ongoing. We, we, we intend on furthering the online availability for deeds and mortgages. We continue to work with the City of Albany for shared services programs, which includes these local government <laughs> records management improvement fund programs that we, grants that we received. We, my, it is my goal in 2018 to work with the local municipalities in, Al in Albany County with regards to technology regarding <laughs> scanning of their records and online access to their records. As we continue to build our technology in the county clerk's office, we hope that we can reach out to the local municipalities in Albany County to talk to them about helping them out. <clears throat> and again, we, are, we intend on 2018 to apply for another local government records management improvement fund for additional funding and opportunities to continue our records management program here in Albany County and wherever we <clears throat> decide to partner with, with that, uh, with that uh, grant application. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for the clerk? Mr. Miller. Hi, uh, um, one question. The revenue that you get in for uh, printing up deeds, the online system, is that going into this county clerk's fee or where, where is that? That, yes. Yeah, that go, yes, it does. A1410-01255. That includes all the <coughs> revenue that we take in for the county clerk's office, including deeds and mortgages. And, uh, you know, we can't, obviously, I can't... Um, you know, I can't track what's going to happen in a year in Albany County when it comes to selling of homes and, and, and transfer of deeds and things along that line. So we kind of have to uh, make a best guess estimate when it comes to uh, budgeting the revenue for that. And we've done pretty good so far, and we've turned over quite a bit of money each year, my three years that I've been with you to the Albany County, so there, to your general fund. And um, hopefully we can continue that trend again in 2018. Uh, we budgeted. Uh, we, 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 we budgeted our revenue very uh, along the same lines as what we have in the past because we just don't know how the economy is going to be. I, w I wasn't talking about the recording of these. I'm talking about when if you go on online and search a deed, there's a five dollar charge. There's a subscription page. fee. Yes. Is that that's cool? included in that? Okay, because that, that doesn't go directly to us. It goes to some company or no, 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 okay. no, no. We have IQS InfoQuick Solutions is our company that our vendor that we deal with. <coughs> IQS runs our scanning, can sharing, and indexing system for us. We pay them ninety-six thousand dollars a year to do that. In turn, we set up an agreement with IQS that Albany County would get ninety percent of the subscri subscription fees, and ten percent would go to them. So, uh, last year I believe we took in six hundred and. We took in sixty-seven, sixty-eight thousand dollars in subscri subscription fees, and we're going to we're going to go above and beyond that this year. So you say subscription fees? That's the charge for printing if somebody puts a deed. That's so. so if somebody goes on right now, you can get online and go from 1980 to current, and you can see our deeds and mortgages online. Right. 
if you want to print if you them. want to print one of those more the the, the, the the larger title companies that we deal with usually at the beginning of the year they give us one <coughs> flat fee of like fifteen hundred dollars pay for their su subscription fee for the year and then they utilize it all the time the one-time user you're a home you're you're a person at home let's say mr. Grimm is home and he wants to just get online and pull one deed off uh, he pays the five dollar subscription fee and he can he can print his uh, his deed online at home that's the one-time user there are different phases of how we can how we sell those subscriptions so we're getting 90 percent of mr. Grimm's charger then that's correct mr. Quick question. Uh, recently, the legislature passed a local law uh, about uh, wage gaps between men and women, and just that of uh, it's going to be a common theme. I'm going to ask everyone: um, Are you aware of any wage gaps between uh, men and women in your department? Well, uh, right now, I don't control the wages. Uh, it's under Civil Service Employees Association contract, and uh, I can't. I don't even know what the salaries are going to be yet, Mr. Signoracci. I'm afraid. Okay. It's under negotiations, and until those negotiations are completed, I, I don't know. But if there was a problem, I'd be the first one to address it. Thank you, sir. The uh, fees for services is 128000 less this year. Uh, which line item? A14? Yeah, you're 814. 1411. A14? 814. Which two twelve? Yeah, you'll be 81411. Four zero four six fees for services. Last year, twenty seventeen is three hundred thirteen. Now we're down to one eighty four. Mr. Chairman, what happened with that was they they lumped in uh, two sets of fees for services for the same thing. So we went back and amended the budget so that we did not touch that money. That money went back to the county. So this year, you're seeing the fees for services exactly what it should be. And the, the decrease in the archive grant revenue is that grant that went away? Which one is that one, sir? Uh, down the bottom of the page of the revenue, your 3040 account, 1411. It was 149,000. Now it's the last year was 295. Now it's 149. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I got the two of them confused. The one that you're talking about now is the one they lumped into two. They put two sets of numbers into the same one, and then we in, had a back. Had grant. Yeah. The, 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 the grant amount was. For services, what they do. <coughs> Services was 313, now it's 184. Um, they decreased that also. Fees for services, I know. Page 214, 44046. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get back to you on that All answer because right. I really don't know the answer to that right, right now. Get back to our office. That's fine. Mr. Burgoff. Um, hmm. Sir, uh, can you give us an update on the uh, program for codification of the uh, charter and the local laws? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I work, I'm working <coughs> with um, Brandon Russell, um, and uh, as your local laws are passed with the, the county legislature, we, we immediately send them to the to the codification company for printing, and they're put onto the uh, the system automatically. Phase one is completely done. Uh, phase two is just a matter of getting through what uh, all the new local laws and things like that that you have ongoing now. But Mr. Russell has really been the point person on that, and he could probably answer that question better than I. <laughs> um, to date, we've been working on getting all the local laws and applicable resolutions and ordinances going back to when we first became a uh, legislative body. So that's where we are at the, at the point currently. Do, do we anticipate how long it will take to go back and put the historical perspective together? Because it would seem to me that at some point in time, something's going to have to come to the legislature to probably do away with some old and duplicative stuff. Uh, I mean, is there going to be a recodification part of this afterwards? Um, that's something I'm sure that the, the can be discussed. But as far as the codification process with the RFP, this is just the uh, collection and um, putting online or digital of all the previous uh, resolutions going back uh, roughly yeah, 70 years. Really don't mm -hmm. 68. Forgive me, um, as clarification, we're going back to um, 
when the legislature was started, and then we're going back a little bit further regarding applicable local laws that may be uh, regarding taxes that uh, may have came about while we were still aboard a super lab. So, roughly 70 years. Mr. A. Joyce. Mr. Clerk, the cloud storage data to protect county records and going to the after that. That information <coughs> includes personally identifiable information like social security. I, I can't hear you. The cloud storage data protect records in the event of a disaster? Yes, absolutely. Does that include the personally identifiable information like social security numbers, any other sensitive kind of information? Uh, I believe the answer to that is yes, but I would have to ask my IT department that question yeah. for you. And just a good, another good question for follow-up would be if that 10,000 includes cybersecurity measures to Oh, yeah, absolutely. The back end? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> yep. That I can answer for sure. Fine. Thank you. Um, I have a couple questions. They're mostly related to this. Chris brought up earlier the um, representatives from the city of Albany met with the mayor of Albany, and there was some discussion about a uh, potential plan. The unusual situation where there's a two city of Albany employees who work in the Hall of Records, and there was a discussion about a possible... Um, potential deal where the um, city would, would pay the county uh, basically a negotiated fee to manage the records rather than having these uh, two people be city employees. But um, I'm curious what your view is. Um, if you could explain a little bit more about how the whole situation works, what your view is on this situation, if you think it's a situation that um, makes okay. sense, and then also about potential change in the situation. We have two city of Albany employees that are employed at the Albany County Hall of Records. That contract has been since 1982, so 35 years now that that, ha that contract has been in place. It is a microfilm aide and a records management officer, those two positions. They right now have, n we are not responsible for their health insurance, we are not responsible for anything. The city of Albany pays their fringe benefits and their salaries. The only thing they do is work at the Hall of Records and they answer to my staff. The, the Hall of Records right now, uh, if you paid attention to the city of Albany's budget, which I'm sure you did, uh, she has, the, the mayor has taken $140,000 and put it into contractual services for, for uh, records management. Uh, so we, we are currently working with our county attorney and the corporation council for the city of Albany to see what kind of a solution we can come up with uh, to rectify this situation of records management. Now you gotta understand the city of Albany has 17,000 cubic foot of records stored in our facility. We charge them $70,000 a year. The employees are, you know, they get paid with, you know, with the, the amount of money that they get from the city of Albany. The records management program that we run is the shared services program between the city of Waterville, or excuse me, I'm going back to my hometown here, the city of Albany and the county of Albany. Uh, we are the only joint records management program in the state of New York right now, and I do not, personally do not want to see us lose that. If we lose that opportunity, we probably will lose the opportunity for these shared services grants that we've been receiving the past two years. Uh, how much are they? How much are what? Our shared services grants. They were total three hundred thousand dollars between the two years. And so if you didn't have those two people there, those we wouldn't qualify. If for I them. didn't have the contract from nineteen eighty two in place, and we did not have those employees working for us, that's correct. We would be in violation. So pretty of much, they pay for themselves. They get paid twice. So he pays for them, we get paid for them being there. No, we don't get paid for them we being there. We get the three hundred thousand from the grant. <coughs> the grant. Well, that's that's a different. That's something different. Well, it's I mean, still money. It, it's money, correct? It's money that we want it's to get. It's money. Yeah. Family family I, I, wait, yeah. I have a fault. Just, I don't mean to interrupt, but the Rockefeller report that was just released specifically says that we should do this right. as a means to save money for both municipalities. So what you're saying is directly contradicting what Jim Malatris in, in the Shared Services Report says. I, I, I have to apologize. I didn't read that report, but I, I can only tell you what's good for Albany County. I mean, that, that was a, that, 
we had a big presentation. And, 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 and I understand the mayor's point of view on, on wanting to, you know, to, to downsize, but by doing that, it's going to it's going to seriously jeopardize what we have with our shared services program. And 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 the other, you know, the other question I have is if if we if this program is is eliminated, where is that seventeen thousand cubic foot of records going to go? The program's not going to get eliminated. We would just absorb the people. That that's what they're attempting to do. But the problem is that $140,000 is not enough to cover the cost of the fringe benefits, the salaries, and the contractual services that we have with the city of Albany currently. In other words, it's $330,000 you get for the shared services. Where does that money come from? We, that money comes to us in Albany County. Right, because you have the program with the city of Albany. Correct. If you didn't have that, you wouldn't be getting the $330,000. I mean, I can't. So that well, that's thousand just going into the general law, your general fund. No. Well, no, 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 no. What's your grant for? He wants to know your grant. Tell me the grant for the specific. Well, specific the program. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to do a specific program for the money? Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. Not not just having it, two people sitting no, there. No. Paid by no. 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 That has nothing to do with it. Updating or the grant money is specifically in 2016. The grant money was specifically dedicated for the city of Albany's marriage records and the County of Albany's marriage records that we hold for the City of Albany. Okay. That's what that grant was for. The second one, one-time grant. One -time grant. Okay. The second one in 2017 that we were awarded, which is that $149,000 you're seeing in the line item there, that one was dedicated for the City of Albany's Building and Compliance Department records and the County of Albany's deed records. Now that money, uh, that money that we have for the city of Albany's building and compliance department from that grant, right now the city of Albany has all their records in the city of Albany in, in City Hall. They have to go from Henry Johnson Boulevard all the way down to City Hall when they need stuff and then go back to their offices and get there. What it's going to help us do in the county of Albany is put much more of our deeds online and, and so that people can have access to it right on. The, and so that's specifically what those two grants are for it, not for salaries. And you're comfortable with the range we have now. You wouldn't want to see it go away. Um, I would want to do what's best for Albany County, Mr. Chairman, uh, and I would I would entertain any ideas. And uh, if uh, if it was if it was for the best for our taxpayers in Albany County, I would entertain it. Yes, Mr. Fine. So just to follow up on that, would you would you prefer to see the current system continue, or would you prefer a system as um, as I know the mayor of Albany talked to us about where the city paid us a fee to manage it, uh, assuming the fee was a fee that everyone agreed upon, that everyone agreed upon was a, a fair deal. Do you, which, do you have an opinion either way? One well, way or the other? should I answer that right now? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're in negotiations right now. Yeah. Yeah. Just How much is the money? Um, well, we actually have a... Negotiations. You can get back to us when you're done negotiating. Well, sure. we have a meeting scheduled tomorrow morning with City okay. Hall. Uh, we should hopefully be able to flush out some of the issues that are, are being asked tonight. Yeah. Um, it's so hard. It's just hard for us to answer right now because we don't we don't have the answer. We don't even know what the city is going to propose to us tomorrow at this meeting. I, I would I would love to answer it all tonight. If you can let us know, because she really harped on that. The mayor, yeah, I, I certainly will. Mm -hmm. You know. And if there's a legitimate reason why just we're going to say no. Eventually, it's going to come here anyway. So just uh, whatever you do. So <laughs> <laughs> well said, Gary. Any other questions? <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Frank. Okay. Bruce, uh, you mentioned okay. title searchers before. And the chairs are pretty ragged that they lose so on and so forth. Is there any reimbursement from these people? I mean, they use our facility like it's theirs. Yeah, they, they do use our facility like our, like it's theirs, and the only thing we get from is rent for what they uh, what they. What's the rent? Um, I don't have that off the top of my head. I'm sorry. On top of the seventy thousand for storage. No, that's the city of Albany. He's asking me about the title searchers. Yeah. Yeah. They use our place. Oh, it's like it's theirs. Yeah, they have fourteen. Uh, they have fourteen stations in my office that they utilize. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then their offices, they rent from Albany County or on the first floor, or what's considered the, the basement floor of the, of the, the building. <laughs> but all their, all their equipment they utilize, uh, Frank, is the County of Albany's property. I know, I know. That's, that's what my 
Yeah. Well, I can certainly I can certainly pursue some you know some avenues. Yeah, just send us the rental. What, what, what that is. I think it's worth taking a look at to see if there's some value. I mean, you know, we charge fact charges to our own agencies. And here they are from outside using phones, using desks, using chairs, using heat. These are phones? No, they do not use our phones. Well, stop now. Cell phones. Cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they pay for their own and whatever phones they have in their first floor offices we don't pay for that either they pay for that thank you mr chairman uh, mr hitley uh, we, we, you're talking a lot about storage expanding a hall of records because of this uh, this huge appetite for storage but given our unprecedented capacity now to create digital files from paper shouldn't we be moving the direction of needing less storage because we can make digital files of just about anything now in, 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 and in very high resolution and in things that are not eight and a half by 11. And that's the direction I'm heading, but unfortunately right now there, there are certain uh, aspects of our court system that requires that we keep documents for, for a period of a lifetime and we cannot get rid of them. Keep, even keep if, written documents? Yes. Unfortunately that's the case. Are there any other questions for the mayor? So I, I, Mr. Bullock. Yeah. Uh, you moved into a public facility and you made savings. Could you elaborate on on what kind of savings you know was to the clerk's office? And I'd like to have your opinion on shared services because I was at the meetings with the mayor also, and you know it seems to me that we could do a lot more shared services between the city and the county, especially well, in terms of records? Well, Mr. Bullock, obviously uh, shared services is one of the governor's initiatives for all of us to, to take a look at. And, you know, any time that I can be a proponent of shared services, I'm going to do it. Uh, you know, I'm already working uh, on a shared services issue with, this, with Schoharie County, with the Schoharie County clerk, and she's having some, some problems down there, and I think I might be able to help her out with that, and, and it's going to fall under our shared services category. Uh, as far as the uh, municipalities in Albany County, as you heard me say in 2018, my goal is to reach out to them to see what we can do to help them with their own uh, programs and, and, and share some services with them also. What about your savings on going into a public building? <clears throat> I'm not sure what you mean by that question. Well, in terms of rent, and everything else. We don't we don't rent a building. Yeah, right. You're in a public building. That's what I mean. And, and do you have enough space in that that location for all your records? We do your microfilm and everything. We do in the county clerk's office. We do not at the hall of records. You we have 104,000 cubic foot of records. Uh, that's the space that we have the capacity for now. We're well above and beyond that where we're storing things on pallets. Uh, the unfortunate part is records keep coming in and we can't destroy them because we have to follow a retention schedule that the State Education Department requires us to follow. No so, matter what they are, microfilm or what? Correct. Are there any other questions for the clerk? Thank you, Mr. Clerk, for coming this evening. Thank you. Next up, County Attorney, page 136. <laughs> what burgers? Hamburgers? County attorney can take a seat. Sorry. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, I'll give you a brief overview. There's really uh, no frills to, to uh, my budget request for 2018. Uh, we are a total staff of 34 employees. 19 of them are uh, attorneys. The remaining 15 are investigators and support staff. Uh, the proposed budget for 2018 is uh, an increase of 2% for all the non-union uh, employees, uh, which are 31 of the 34. Remaining three, it was uh, pointed to, brought to our attention that was an oversight. There should be uh, an amendment to the uh, proposed executive budget to include the two percent for those uh, uh, three union uh, staff. So, other than that, uh, we we haven't created any new positions. We haven't uh, renamed uh, 
got rid of any uh, new positions, and uh, that's pretty much an overview. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Really sure. Are there any questions <laughs> for the Real quick, common theme, local law P, uh, in your department, is everyone paid on a fair and equitable rate? I'm familiar with local law P. Uh, I presented a uh, some salary adjustments last year to this body, uh, which were denied. I would like to take a closer look at uh, uh, my last couple years of budgets and be able to report back to the committee uh, with more particularity. Are there any other questions for me? Yes, Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, raise the age will have an impact yes, on sir. your office, uh, although it doesn't take an effect until, I think, December of next year? October 1st of 18. October, so a quarter uh, a quarter of the year. Correct. Um, and is that, are you budgeting for, I, I think, probably hundreds of cases? Well, Additionally for that raise quarter? the age uh, brings up an interesting topic, and I've been uh, participating in a number of seminars that have been hosted by different uh, agencies from, the, from our state. Uh, every time I leave one of those forums, I have more questions than we have answers. Everything has been pushed back from state level. Uh, where they're supposed to provide us answers, they continue to delay and delay. Uh, we don't know what the regulatory issues are going to be with the, uh, the need for a specialized secure detention facility. Uh, we're supposed to receive those sometimes by the end of the year. Uh, it was intentionally left out of uh, this year's budget, one, because it, it does only it does affect the, the final quarter of 2018, but only uh, one of the main reasons is we don't know what it's going to look like yet, what the final product will be. With the averages and the uh, estimations from the uh, OCFS and uh, other state agencies, DCJS, it looks like the family court and the county of Albany will take on another 400 to 500 cases through family court which is definitely going to have a significant impact not only on the, the uh, Department of Law's uh, needs and resources, but also uh, probation, uh, social services, sheriff. It's going to have a, a lasting effect or a, a impact on a number of different departments. And it, but there will be, the DA's office will be handling less because they were previously prosecuted by the district attorney's office. So it's, it will reduce the, the case the caseload in the DA's office. It will have an impact in reduction of certain cases. They still are the prosecutorial uh, <coughs> agency for certain cases that remain in the youth part that's created under the Raise the Age. But the majority of those cases, those three to four, four to five hundred cases, will uh, be returned to family court and will be prosecuted by uh, members of, of my office. Are there any other questions from the county attorney? Thank you for coming. Thank you. Sorry Thank to keep you waiting, Mr. Chairman. Oh, has a question. I got a oh, no. Oh, whoa. No, stand up when you're ready. I'm yes, here. You serve come it. sit. Come sit over here. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I mentioned to them that uh, our attorneys do the union negotiations inside with inside attorneys, and of course, their attorneys are uh, outhouse attorneys. And you know, in terms of shared services. Does the county have the capacity to share attorney services with the city of Albany? Um, it's an interesting question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, they operate on uh, different uh, areas of interest than, than we do. You know, um, If you're talking specifically in the Corporation Council and the County Attorney's Office, is, 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 is that what you're talking about? Yes. Or would the district attorney be in a position to prosecute vehicle traffic tickets? It, it, needs, it needs further discussion. I don't know. Uh, I don't well, know. we're negotiating union contracts, too. I mean, you have uh, people that are yeah, specialists our, on union uh, issues, and, and could you share those kinds of services? We have a, a, a director within human resources that handles all of our uh, union contracts. Whether that individual could handle those for other municipalities, I think it's Right and you did them all in house. That's what I was going to do. Right. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up, the public defender, Judge Herrick. Page 167. Good evening, folks. Uh, there's not uh, too much that I uh, of new information that I can give to you at this time. Uh, I want to thank the uh, legislature and the county executive for 
uh, allowing us to reorganize earlier this year. Um, you have brought us into the 21st century, and uh, the uh, proposed executive budget maintains um, that level of uh, improvement uh, with the across the board um, salary increase for we're all non-union uh, in the uh, public defender's office. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, we do have pay equity. Yay! <laughs> and and um, uh, there are a, a few minor things in the uh, <coughs> proposed budget that I would just want to bring to your attention. There's some new items. Law intern program, which was a huge, I believe, cost saving uh, this uh, past year. We have pro bono uh, legal interns from the uh, law school that are free, they get course credit, and then we uh, hire uh, those, or we did this year, uh, borrowing from, or stealing, from uh, immigration <laughs> and other uh, county agencies that did not utilize their intern lines, um, about $15,000 to pay for those uh, interns after they had been admitted to practice um, to do intern work uh, for the county, and it saved a, a lot of money for. Is that, a, is that in here now? To There's an intern line uh, that's been added, fifteen thousand, about halfway down, one seventy, page one seventy one. It's item one nine nine three five. That's new. Okay. Yes, that's in there now. Um, the enhanced pay. That's just council at first appearance. And that's continued at $130,000 a year. That's part of the indigent legal services. In yeah, that's in there. So there's no change. No change. Okay. There, there's an increase in, in uh, line um, 22050 uh, for computer equipment uh, that's absolutely necessary for uh, some laptops uh, to be available. There's 7,500 in there. That's correct. I'm sorry, 7,500. Do you need more than that? Uh, I don't. More or less. More or less. I'm. Uh, as far, this is a first year. This is a first year, um, and we can come back. I mean, I'm going to talk in a minute about some unknowns that you just brought up. Uh, um, raise the age and uh, centralized arraignment, uh, which comes back to the video arraignments. Uh, and the the reason why video arraign arraigning did not get off the ground in Albany County was that currently uh, it requires defendant written consent. Oh, they don't want to. They don't want to. And they don't want to do it. Although it would be better for agencies such as the Public Defender's Office. That's state law. Yes. And I ran it past the uh, administrative judge, and it uh, it's just not going to fly presently. Now, I believe in New York City it's done and it does not require defendant uh, consent. But in uh, counties uh, outside of the uh, New York City area, I believe it does. And, and in Albany County, uh, Judge Breslin said, you show me a consent form that a defendant will sign and we can try to implement it because it's all set up at the jail. Uh, it would be uh, of assistance <coughs> to centralized arraignment if that gets off the ground in Albany County. They're trying it in four counties already in New, in New York State on a trial basis. Um, Without the consent? We, no, this is centralized arraignment, but that has other issues. That is not video arraignment, it's centralized arraignment, which would cut back on, on counsel at first appearance. Uh, requirements uh, and could save money and utilize that ILS funds maybe somewhere else but that's still uh, on the uh, planning board um, cell phone cost uh, this year uh, just after I uh, came on which is just shy of a year um, there was an issue that caused the uh, public defender attorneys who were usually using, using their private cell phones to communicate with defendants and families uh, to now have um, a county provided cell phones. The monthly cost of that um, was not negotiated or resolved between the public defender's office and the county and it did come out of our budget and I don't see it here 
um, included in this budget. So if it's coming, if we're paying for it, it would need we to can be run a year to date on your telephone. <coughs> right. If that's in there somewhere, we'll, we'll run a year to date on it. Uh, <laughs> I think it's 24. It's all all uh, all members of your your staff yeah, well, are required to because they're they're all using their no, phone? just the attorneys and uh, not. I don't well, use the attorney staff. I didn't. I'm I'm too old school. It's an old flip phone, and I didn't like it, so I don't use it. <laughs> uh, most of the no, attorneys use it. Um, the uh, indigent legal services grants require uh, more and better uh, detailed data. Uh, the computer fees, uh, which are set forth um, about two thirds of the way down, page 171, item 44041. Uh, once we see the final ILS grant uh, with the requirements for data, that may have to be adjusted for a, um, a new central um, uh, management system. Um, there are programs, but they cost more money than the one that we are utilizing now. Um, and that's, that's it for the uh, new uh, costs. Um, and I'll, um, I'm available to answer any questions. Thank you, Judge. Where are we on the 18B costs for family? 18, we don't have anything to do with 18B costs. There, um, Judge Rosen. Can I just uh, say, 18B costs is one. I'm sorry. Where you have a conflict of interest, the public, say there's three defendants charged with a crime, none of them are. All of them are eligible for free legal representation. The public defender would take one. The alternative public defender, the conflict defender, would take one. Oh, and then the third would go out to an 18B. Uh, the main 18B costs, I believe, are in family court, not in the criminal justice system. And the judges assign and appoint uh, 18B attorneys uh, where they believe that there's a need. Sometimes when we have a, a, a conflict of interest, Say the <coughs> conflict defender has somebody, we have somebody, co-defendants, and one of <coughs> the two offices uh, establishes, a, finds a new conflict, then an 18B would be assigned. But the cost of 18Bs in the criminal justice system in Albany County is substantially less than in family court. I'll save that question, I guess, because I'm interested to in know. Mr. Trichet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Judge, I've got a couple of questions. Sure. On uh, page 170, there are a couple of uh, positions that are left vacant, and there's a, a $1. Uh, it's been reduced to $1. As I understand it, the $1 means it's still there and it's still available, but it has not been funded. Do you so anticipate filling those positions in 2018? I, when the ILS money starts coming in, uh, which hasn't really started to occur, the grants are continuing, but when the uh, money that was promised in the uh, 2017 state budget <coughs> starts coming in. Um, uh, I will be looking to utilize some of that money for some additional positions. And we negotiated in the reorganization for some movement up salary schedules for bringing people uh, who were hired years ago who are, uh, there's no room for them in our office as it now exists to come in and be uh, literally there full time, uh, and although they are working full time, um, but they'd be in-house, uh, those people would, would, instead of getting entry level salaries after ex extended periods of service with the county, would, would uh, be moved up the salary schedule to reflect their uh, new, new uh, position. Thank you. Also, there's a uh, criminal investigator the uh, the salary goes from thirty thousand dollars in twenty seventeen to sixty six thousand three hundred. The thirty thousand is is an, a title called criminal investigator. It's a process server that is office assigned, uh, delivers papers, serves summonses and subpoenas, um, and then we have uh, the criminal um, investigator. There's we're uh, interviewing now for the. Uh, uh, one position that has a maximum of, I think it's 66, um, and we have on board a uh, full-time um, chief criminal investigator. Um, so the the line that would be 
on the, on the about a quarter of the way down 171 150032 that's the process server and we're interviewing for the 66 uh, 300 at this time thank you are there any other questions yes sir Mr. Mayo, middle page 171, enhanced pay. Enhanced pay, um, that's the council at first appearance. That's $130,000 that comes from state money, state grant. Okay. That's the lump sum from right. everybody. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank for you. Being the honor. Next the next will be the, the ultimate public defender, defender Sherry. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. So how are you? Good. Yeah. Well, I'm Sherry, as everybody knows, but this is Matthew, who's an assistant in my office, in charge of our budget needs while I'm on maternity leave. So, any questions? Contact Matt. <laughs> so, this year there is nothing eventful because there's usually nothing eventful in my office. We run very efficiently with the little that we have. The only addition that you would probably uh, note is the addition of $3,900 for the computer equipment. We actually um, five years ago got three laptops which we assigned to our county, our family court staff because they have Wi-Fi in that building so they could take the computers upstairs and use them and work while they were waiting. We now have uh, a full-time criminal staff of three attorneys who bring computers to the jail. They constantly fight over them, so now we budget it for three laptops. They'll use them with docking stations as their actual desktop computers, but they'll be able to take them with them <coughs> to view videos at the jail and so on and so forth. And that's all I have. And that's in the budget, so. so any questions? Mr. Signorage. Common theme. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're going to ask. <laughs> Well, our, our lines are all the same, so yes, it is safe to say we have pay equity. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Where's Doug? Doug, you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you do it, Doug. Don't you do it. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Okay. Thank you. As you're aware, um, our office was created as a result of a grant that we received, the county received from the Office of Indigent Legal Services with the support of the county executive and the legislature to operate a regional immigration assistance center, which provides assistance and training to attorneys in 14 counties in upstate New York. We continue to do that. Uh, we're still subject to the three-year contract that we have with the Office of Indigent Legal Services. And we've now been open for about one and a half years. So things are going well. Our contract is, or our budget is essentially the same as from the previous year. Are there any questions? Mr. Sigurashi. Same question. <laughs> well, I got three people. Yes. Say. <laughs> I got you. Ask him, everybody. Uh, are there any other questions? Thank you. Yes, no. Mr. Bullock. Has the immigration case flow gone up recently during the Trump uh, it, it, It's going up, and I think it, it's <coughs> one of the effects of it is the attorneys are so much more aware of the potential consequences. As a result, they're calling us more frequently, which is a good thing, which is what we train them to do. Um, part of our training is we try to advise them so that they can competently handle a case when, they, when they're representing a non-citizen. But more importantly, we always say to them, if you're not sure, if you're not confident, call us. And we provide advisory opinions to them. We provide guidance, assistance, and assist in the representation. Um, I, just to say, I was just going to make a compliment very briefly. I have a very large population of uh, people who desire to be new Americans that are uh, living in my legislative district, and I have actually called your office before, so I just want to say thank you. Mr. Fine. Um, I think this is a great office, and um, my question is that there's, there's a lot of immigrants out there who don't know where to go, especially the people in this country, to seek services. 
And is there an outreach effort to the uh, immigrant community? In yes, there, there is. We, uh, one of the objectives that we have is we work very closely with different, especially uh, nonprofit providers such as Legal Aid, USCRI, Reese, um, in the legal project. And we work very closely with them hand in hand. A lot of times they have questions when they're, and everybody, again, in this, in this current time period, everybody's very concerned. If you're gonna file an application for citizenship and a person had done something, uh, was convicted of something several years ago, should you bother to apply for citizenship? So we've been called in on a lot of those types of cases and we're always willing to assist with them. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Milstein, Thank you. for coming. Thank you. Our next meeting will be November, Wednesday, November 1st. I mean, the chair, a question. Our, yes. On the original agenda, the controller's office was signed, on there. Outside council went crazy down. The recorder of the agreement. We have scheduled him for uh, session three, yeah. November 2nd at 5 30. How about the other? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to say the last report that I saw is that you guys are going to be catching me in the office. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.